Hi guys, and welcome back to Studio One with me, Gregor. So today we want to talk about effect splitters in Studio One. And effect splitters are truly remarkable because they allow you to do parallel processing in a variety of ways directly from Studio One without having to use endless amounts of return channels. Effect splitters are a godsend for anybody who wants to do parallel processing. So if you want to do some New York style compression on your vocals on a separate channel, there's no need to have an extra return channel on it. However, splitters are not limited to mixing purposes. You can also use them for amazing sound design possibilities. And I want to show you both of these applications right now. All right, so for this example, I brought you a little acoustic guitar here and I've applied an analog delay effect on it, which creates this nice feel of space, but it also brings a couple of mixing issues. See if you could spot them. Yeah, it really feels very, very nice, this space and this reverb -y kind of effect, but in the lower and low mid frequencies, it makes it kind of muddy and we lose definition. So traditionally, we could work around this problem by taking this insert effect and creating a sense effect for it instead, so that on this return channel that we're creating by this, we can use an EQ and carve out the mids and low frequencies of a delay that way. Now Studio One makes this easier than most other DAWs and I just open up the mixer because just by dragging the analog delay from the inserts to the sense portion of my channel, I'm creating the respective effects channel here and I can just bypass the analog delay here, um, insert my EQ, carve out the lower mids and lowers a bit and the problem is solved. The only issue with that is that I now have created a new channel just to solve a problem that I have on an existing channel. If I would do this every time, I guarantee you that all of my sessions would have 20 faders more than was necessary. A much better way to work is with effect splitters. So you can open them up by clicking in the track inspector on the channel editor here and switching to the routing tab. Now we find the analog delay that we have already inserted to our channel and the splitter option. So when I drag a splitter from here, what actually happens is that there's a new virtual output created for my channel and now it runs through two outputs instead of just one and they meet up at the end again. Why is this useful? Well, essentially in this normal setting, this gives you an unprocessed signal or a signal that runs through a different effect chain on the one side and then a process signal on the other and you can mix them in relation to each other. So essentially this is adding a dry wet knob to each and every plugin or even external effect of yours, which can be highly useful if you want to do any kinds of parallel processing, compression and what have you. You can also use uh, the channel split mode and what happens then is that everything that runs through this left lane here, this left um, virtual output one, is also being output on the left channel and everything that runs to the right is being output by the right channel. So just to give you a quick idea how that sounds like. I'm muting the right output now. So you should hear the processed signal with the analog delay on the left channel only and now the natural one on the right. It's quite nice to create a stereo width effect. Maybe it's not the best choice in this application, but it's very cool to try out. And then we have the frequency split option, which is probably the most interesting one for us right now, because it allows us to have everything on the left side of the splitter to run through the frequency marked in blue. So in this case, everything that's 240 hertz and below would run through the analog delay and everything on the right side of the splitter would be affecting 240 hertz and upwards. Now, as I've said before, I would like the analog delay to be more in the higher frequencies, so it really adds that nice sparkle, but I want to keep it out of the lower frequencies. So naturally, I would take the analog delay here and bring it back to the right portion of the splitter. Now, a really good idea is to just mute the left output so that we only hear the process signal and find the sweet spot for this. So now we hear everything 240 Hertz and upwards. And now just look for the spot where the delay doesn't annoy me anymore. There, it seems pretty good. And now I just unmute the unprocessed output. 
and we hear the result together. Yeah, as you can probably hear, the definition really returned and all the clarity, but we still have that nice spacious effect in the upper frequencies. Perfect, and we don't even have to sacrifice a new channel for that. I want to take this further with just one more example here. As you can see, in this one, we have a splitter with three splits in total. Every splitter can have up to five splits actually. And this gives you so much creative possibilities and freedom. So in this case, we worked again on a guitar. Let's listen to it really quickly. So we have on the left side, or output one, the first split, just a limiter. And here we have a little bit of a beat delay. These are frequency split here, as you can see. And then in the middle, we went for a much more sound designy approach. So we have the Pro EQ first, that goes into a chorus, that goes into a reverb, and that really transformed the sound into something completely different. Have a listen. And once I'm happy with that, I can just save it either as an effects chain and it's gonna be recalled immediately once I restore it, or I can just drag the entire thing to my browser and store it that way. So whether you wanna use effect splitters just for mixing purposes or creative sound design purposes, the possibilities are endless. Try it out for yourself. <laughs>